On the last episode of Hops and Gnarly Brewing, I made a wild American sour and we left it to ferment in this Anvil Crucible conical fermenter. But the truth is, I wasn't telling you the whole story. See, a couple months ago, I got this. This is a half barrel fooder made specifically for home brewers by Foodersmith and today I'm using it to start a Solera project. If you haven't heard this term before, Solera is a method for aging things like vinegar, sherry, and beer where a blend of varying aged liquids is created in a barrel before the aging process is complete. Sometimes this is done using multiple barrels. A certain percentage of beer is removed from the oldest barrel and refilled using beer from a younger barrel. It can also be done in a single vessel. But before I can start this project, I need enough wort to fill the fooder, and that means we need to make another batch of American Sour Ale. Now, let's make some beer. Beer, I'm using some local spring water that I picked up at the grocery store and I'm adjusting the water profile using gypsum, calcium chloride, epsom salt, canning salt, and a little lactic acid. I'm shooting for a fairly balanced water profile with about 75 parts per million sulfate and 60 parts per million chloride. While this step isn't necessarily required to make good beer, it definitely helps, especially if you want to make something great. Once again, using a slightly altered version of Perpetuum Sour from American Sour Beers by Michael Tonsmeyer. You can also find all the details on his blog, The Mad Fermentationist. I'll be using some locally grown malts from Proximity Malt and I substituted their malted oats for the flaked oats called for in the recipe. mashing this in until everything is nice and saturated and holding steady at our target mash temperature of 156 Fahrenheit or about 69 Celsius. Then I need to let the mash bed settle for a few minutes before I start the recirculation. While the mash finishes up, let's take another look at the fooder we'll be using to start this Solera. Like I said before, this is a half barrel fooder made specifically for homebrewers by Foodersmith. It's made from American white oak staves that have been air dried for at least two years and comes with a bunch of one and a half inch tri-clamp ports and accessories. There's a top port on the head of the fooder, a sampling port just over halfway down, a in and out port towards the bottom, and a dump port on the very bottom. Foodersmith hydrates and leak tests each fooder before they leave the warehouse, but it's still important to fill your fooder with warm water as soon as you receive it to rehydrate it. And if you're going to store it for any significant amount of time before filling it with beer, you can consider filling it with a holding solution. I knew it'd be a couple months before I could fill mine with wort, so it's currently holding a solution of citric acid and potassium metabisulfate. I can't wait to get some beer in there and start this Solera project. Okay, we've been recirculating this mash for an hour now, but I just discovered a little problem. Here's what's going on. You know the thing that goes like, so on the inside of the ball lock valve, there's a dip tube that goes down. Yeah, on the top kettle? No, on the bottom kettle. Okay. And basically, it just makes it so I don't pick up all the shit that's like floating around in the kettle. Dunk. So there's that one. There's also the Whirlpool port that's kind of like wavy. 
This one. Right. It's like wavy, but obviously they're not in the fucking kettle <laughs> because they're in my hand. Luckily, Meg's here to save the day and is gonna run to the store to try to find me some heat resistant gloves so I can get the dip tubes into the boil kettle without burning my hands. In the meantime, I'm raising the mash temperature to 168 Fahrenheit for mash out and pumping most of the wort into the top kettle. After a bit of messing around, we got the problem sorted. That means it's time to yank these grains and get our boil started. The grains are out of the way, the wort is boiling, and it's time for our one and only hop edition. Here's 34 grams of Willamette hops, which should put us just under 12 IBUs. With the hops in the bag, we've got 60 minutes to go. Okay, we've been spinning this wort for 45 minutes now and it's time to start sanitizing the chiller. We've got 15 minutes to go. Just like that, we're ready to chill this wort down and get things ready for fermentation. As we get close to pitching temperature, I'm using a diffusion stone from Blickman to oxygenate the wort. And it's all hands on deck for fermenters this week. Let me get this transferred and we'll get things set up inside for primary fermentation. We ended up with about six gallons in this fermenter and four in another that's barely visible behind that anvil crucible. For primary fermentation, I'm pitching a small starter of W15 from Imperial Yeast. I could have transferred this right into the fooder, but I think it'll be better to get through primary fermentation first. That way, we can limit the amount of troop that makes its way into the fooder. After a full day of waiting for the airlocks to start rumbling, I found a couple small cracks in the fermenter lids. It probably would have been fine for primary fermentation, but I ended up transferring to new fermenters just in case and I saw activity in the airlocks right away. It's been a couple weeks since then and the yeast has dropped out and the airlocks have stopped bubbling. Time to get this party started. The first thing I need to do is ditch the holding solution that's been hanging out in the fooder. Cool. Now let's get this beer in there. With the crucible, I'm able to dump the yeast before transferring. 
I used Imperial Citrus on this one and man, it ripped through it. With that out of the way, I can begin the transfer. Perfect. We've got about 10 gallons in the fooder and I'm hoping this next one will top it off. God damn it. Sweet. Just as we ran out of beer in the second fermenter, the fooder started to overflow. Now we have Imperial Citrus from the first batch, Suburban Brett from the second batch, and I also added Imperial FO8 to make it a real party. And as a bonus, we've got about four gallons of extra wort on hand to top off the fooder as necessary. Now, all we have to do is wait. This episode of Hops Gnarly Brewing was made possible by these awesome partners. If you like this video, let me know in the comments and consider subscribing so you don't miss the next one. Thanks for hanging out with me today. I'll see you again soon. Hey, real quick before you go, I want to make sure you know about a new project from Hops and Gnarly. Today, we launched the first ever Hops and Gnarly mini magazine, and it's available now on hopsandgnarly.com. In the magazine, you'll find 10 recipes from the show, the gear in a beer beer of the year, a bunch of original photography by Meg and I, and more. Support the channel and check it out today.